Games. Ocala's Information Station, 1370 WOCA. Ocala! All right, five minutes after 11 o'clock. Um, this next interview is one of those that we wish we had more time f- for. Um, the 27th day of Nisan on the Hebrew calendar is recognized as Holocaust Remembrance Day. And on our calendars uh, this year, it's Monday, April 24th, which is today. So uh, in that spirit, we wanted to bring to you uh, this next interview. Uh, Joshua M. Green has written a book you're not going to put down after you pick it up. It's called Justice at the Cow, The Trials of an American Prosecutor. Um, we just don't have enough time for me to give you a long intro, so let me uh, just go straight to uh, to Joshua. Good morning, Joshua. Good morning, Larry. Where are you? Where are you calling from? My home on Long Island, up here in New York. Oh, wow. Two Long Islanders today, Robin, in one, in one yeah. show. I'm, f- I'm from Long Island yeah. originally. Where, where do you live on Long well, Island? Well, we're not going to be planting any peanuts any soon, <laughs> uh, anytime soon. <laughs> <laughs> not sure what that means. Um, well, thank, thank you for being on the air with us today. Um, how, do you have a connection to somebody from the ho- who was killed in the Holocaust? My grandmother's family uh, perished. Uh, Twenty-four people went up the chimneys in Auschwitz. Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! Um, so, did you have to do research beyond what your family records were, or, or in order to write this book? Oh, uh, my own family history had nothing to do with it. Um, it was not a subject that was discussed. I wasn't even aware. Of. Uh, of the connection until I was already in college. Oh, really? Um, yeah. No, the justice at Dachau came to me unbidden. It was um, the wife of the late chief prosecutor of the war crimes trials that took place at Dachau who called me and said, I'd like to talk with you about my late husband and what he did after the end of World War II. And when I found out, I couldn't resist and spent the next three years of my life putting that story together and that's the book and so can you give us uh, a thumbnail sketch of what what is in the book sure a lot of people have heard of the Nuremberg trials that was an international court and those were the policy makers 22 chieftains of the Nazi party well where were all the other Nazis where were all the people who ran the concentration camps and did all the torture and the starvation and 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 the the humiliation and the, the murders the executions yeah. 65, 65 miles south of Nuremberg on the grounds of the former Dachau concentration camp, the U.S. Third Army set up its military tribunal to conduct trials against the operators of the camps liberated in the American zone. So those trials were the trials handled by Colonel William Denson, good-looking 32-year-old man of God from Birmingham, Alabama, who was teaching at West Point until the judge advocate said, hey, we need a good young mind like yours over here in Germany. You're going to head up the trials of these Nazi monsters. Oh, my God. So he had no idea what he was getting himself into, and it took three years of his life. He almost died from exposure to the evidence of all these horrors for so long. What, what do you but mean? But he won righteous convictions. What, what the ex- he, his body weight, uh, he, he was looking at photographs at reports of executions he saw the pile of human ashes when he first arrived at the Dachau camp tables in the so-called hospitals where prisoners were uh, resectioned without anesthesia and over the course of his work there his body weight dropped from 168 pounds to 116 pounds and and he developed a palsy like trembling in his hands and, and legs and finally he collapsed himself in court and had to be hospitalized Wow, did he? I mean, did he feel like he was in the presence of the devil himself when he talked to these people? Um, wow, what a fascinating question that is. Um, given that this was a deeply religious man who saw his assignment as a calling, as a mission to prove the efficacy of law to address even unprecedented crimes, the horrors of the camps had never been brought before uh, a court before. There, the word Holocaust didn't exist back in, in November, December of 45. Uh, genocide, mass murder had never been tried before in a court of law. So I suppose in a way he might have seen this as the devil's work. He approached it, however, as a due process 
purist, as a lawyer, mm-hmm. um, and won righteous evictions based on international laws of the conventions, the Hague and the and the uh, uh, Geneva Conventions. And he was not alone. He had to build his own team. He had to build his own team, and all the top drawer people, they had been sent north to Nuremberg. So he was working with people who had no experience in this arena. It was a, it was a nice group of young lawyers, but um, they had no experience in, in this arena at all. In fact, all of the crew was kind of second tier. I read in the transcripts, the 15,000 pages of trial transcripts, one of the translators, those are all second, third tier translators, uh, took the phrase out of sight, out of mind, and translated it as uh, 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 blind and crazy. So, to give you an idea of the caliber of the crew they had there, what, what, was there anything that made? Was there anything about the location of the trial that made it a challenge? In other words, was there ever a time where he said, "Can we move this to New York or something?" <laughs> I mean, why did it have to be there? The Allied forces all had their military tribunals, and they were the French had theirs. The Russians had theirs later, the Polish, uh, the Germans had theirs later, and the Americans inside their zone of liberation. And the reason was they were following, following the what was called the Moscow Declaration of 1943, which said as far as possible, the perpetrators of these crimes, and the Holocaust can be seen as a series of crimes, yeah. should be brought back to the places where their crimes were committed to stand trial. So that's why these tribunals were where they were. And you had used the number of 177 Nazi guards and officers. Yeah, um, Bill Denson was in charge of what are called the four parent trials. Inside the zone with the American army liberated Nazi occupied Europe, there were four concentration camps. Camp Dachau, Camp Mauthausen, Camp Flossenburg, and Camp Buchenwald. And the parent trials, which were the trials that Colonel William Denson conducted, had as their objective to prove that operating a concentration camp was a criminal enterprise in its entirety, so that all of the subsequent trials would not have to establish that precedent any longer. There were thousands of people, thousands of arrestees behind the barbed wire at Dachau awaiting trial. If they had tried them one by one, the trials would still be going on today. So there were these parent trials wow. that proved a concentration camp was a crime in its entirety, and the subsequent trials just had to show that people were serving voluntarily in these camps, and therefore they were a party to the crimes committed there. We've heard about the lampshades made out of human skin, but your book gives us more information mm-hmm. about that horrible p- chapter here, or piece of a chapter. Um, gosh, w- this is uh, actually this is the paperback. It came out originally in two thousand three. Am I reading that right? Yeah, that it, uh, it was well received. I mean, whoever heard of the Dachau trials? And yeah. this was kind of a, yeah. uh, a scandalous uh, series of of of, uh, of legal proceedings. And so the book was a bit of a revelation when it first came out. So going back to the beginning, where you said his wife came to you, um, what was her reason for wanting his story told? Well, she was. German. She, she and her late husband, William Denson, met at a uh, social gathering in Munich after the first trial, the trial of the Dachau camp. That was in late 1945 or early 46. And um, she didn't like what Hitler had done. She was never a party to any of that. Mm-hmm. And um, I asked her, I said, what did you and Bill Denson talk about when you first met? They talked about the need for integrity. Um, I mean, the main theme of justice at Dachau is how easily the rule of law can be betrayed. And she and her future husband talked about how important his work was where there in the Dachau courtroom to show that the United States was capable not only of defeating an enemy, but providing that defeated enemy with due process trials. And at the end of these trials, the Nazi accused, who were then now convicted war criminals, actually shook the hands of their lawyers, saying, we never thought we were going to get such a fair defense. So these were not kangaroo courts. These were not uh, 
ex post facto law. These were righteous due process trials. Okay. Wow. Fascinating story. It's, it's no way in 10 minutes we can cover everything. The book is called Justice at Dachau. It's been around for 14 years already, but we have a, a paperback version out now, and I have a copy of it. If you'd like the copy that was sent to me, uh, call me. I'll put your name on it and leave it for you. The rest of us have to go buy it. Joshua, before you say goodbye, I know we went over a little bit. Can you give us a website, or do we just go to Amazon? Sure, it's Amazon, it's Barnes & Noble, and it's the name of the book, justiceattackout.com. All right, very good. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much, Joshua. Um, we'll be right back. The weather is brought to you by myfwc.com. Safe boating is no accidents. On this Monday, clouds and some sunshine are becoming breezy with a shower or thunderstorm in spots arriving in the afternoon along the coast. The high 78 at the coast, 87 inland. For Monday night, clear to partly cloudy. Lows in the mid to upper 50s inland, 63 along the coast. Tuesday, a mostly sunny, pleasant day with lower humidity, high 83 to 87. From the Florida Weather Center, I'm meteorologist Joe Lundberg. Hi, my name is Erica Olstein. I'm a doctor of acupuncture and oriental medicine. Do you have a gout-ridden toe or bowels that move too slow, creaky knees, or how about an asthmatic wheeze? Then acupuncture is sure to please. Come visit me, your primary care physician, Erica Olstein, at A Better You Healthcare. Call me 